Shalom Israel, Sa'ariya Israel. Uh, today, we're going to bring forth a study. We're going to show how the Most High Yahweh dealt with the prophets, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're going to show that he never dealt with Paul. That bright light was not Yahweh, not, it was not the angel of Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? So, we're going to get to it. We're in the book of Genesis. But, yeah, Paul said a bright light came to him. So, we can see, or we know, you know what I'm saying, that since Paul claiming this light came to him, you know, and, and it told him to teach the Gentiles, you know what I'm saying, or go to the Gentiles and teach them of this knowledge that he, he gained. But it never said anything about it. Uh, uh, about teaching him nothing. You know what I'm saying? He just said a light came to him. Right? So, we're going to go to that verse, matter of fact. Alright. When you go to the book of Acts, right, chapter 26, verse 13, right? Check out what he say. He say, At midnight, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me. And then which journey with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Sal, Sal, why persecute thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. See? So then he said, verse 15. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, who thou persecuted. See? So the bright light that came to him is telling him that he's Jesus. Right? But he's not teaching him nothing. He said, Why persecute me? You know what I'm saying? Then when you go to Acts 22 and 6, he say, And it came to pass that as I made my journey, and I was, and, and, it say, and it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh to Damascus about noon, suddenly shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell to the ground and heard the voice saying unto me, Sal, Sal, why persecute me, thou me? And I answered, Who art thou? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you persecute. See? Right, so, so this light Paul proclaiming came to him, but where's the teachings, right? Like, he's not, he said, why persecute him? Why, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's not teaching him nothing. So how can he come out with all this knowledge all of a sudden teaching the people when this power, this Jesus, never gave him any intelligence, any knowledge, no wisdom under, no wisdom, no knowledge, no, no understanding. Right? Dude just started preaching, and that's craziness. And he started preaching against the, against Moses in the Torah. Right? And you see that when you go to Acts uh, 21. Verses 7, 17 through 24, you know, and, and then you see in Acts 21, 27 through 30, they tried to uh, stone Paul, but the Roman saved him, right? But we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to the book of Acts, we still there, chapter 23, verse 6, because we're going to show that Paul's father was a, Pharisees. Check it out. Where Acts 23 verse 6 it says, But when Paul perceived that one one part were seducers and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, son of a Pharisee, of the hope, the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. See, so he told them that he was the son of a Pharisee. And I'm showing you a picture of a Pharisee, what they look like. 
you know what I'm saying, back then. So obviously, you know, Paul looked, you know what I'm saying, he, he was saying, he was telling you that he's the son of a Pharisee, right? And then he said his mother was an Israelite woman. So let's see what it said about that. So all right, we're at Acts 16 and 1, right? It said, then came he to Derby and, Le and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed, but, but his father was a Greek, right? So, so we see that Paul and Timothy's mother was an Israel, was an Israelite, is, is, Israelitess, but both of their fathers were Greeks, right? So they would come out looking more like, more like this, right? Because this is like a mixed person. So they got him looking like this. But in reality, he would look more like that, a mixed person, right? But as you can see, he still, he may be mixed, but he's still of his father. Because his father is a Pharisee, right? So, he take on his, his father's traits. Because his mother's traits are more Israelites. So, you can say you're an Israelite, but your father is a Pharisee. So, you're a Pharisee. You're an Edomite, right? Right. See, you can see... Clearly, you know, that we we not here playing no games. We're not here for entertainment purposes, but we bringing out this truth. You know what I'm saying? We we going to show this truth, you know what I'm saying, in a, in a factual way so you can see it. You know what I'm saying? Because we reaching out to all of our people trying to bring them to this tour. Right? Uh, but now we're going to show you Because we just showed you The bright light coming to Paul But it didn't teach him nothing So we finna show you how the most High dealt with the the uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob You know what I'm saying We're going we gonna to show you how he dealt with them To show you the difference Because the most high distinguishes the difference Between his people and wickedness Right So we're going to go To uh, Genesis 6 and 8 first See, Genesis 6 and 8 talking about Noah. Say, Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh, right? 6 and 9. These are the offsprings of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with Yahweh. Noah had begun three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But we're showing that Noah was righteous, was a righteous man, and he was perfect in his, in his generations. Noah walked with Yahweh. See? So, so, Noah, you know what I'm saying? When the world was being wicked and corrupt, Noah was in, was in the, the order that Yah set up. Right? Noah, he was elevated up into a higher uh, uh, mind state than the rest of the, the surrounding cast of people that was with, around him, right, in the world around him, right, because Noah was righteous, righteous in a wicked world. Like Enoch, when you talk about Enoch, you say Enoch walked with God, right? Enoch, he also walked with God, right? But Noah was righteous in the eyes of the Most High Yahweh. He was perfect in his generation. He stayed in an elevated mind state, you know, in a tour based mind state that the Most High gave him. Right? Let's go to Genesis 6 and 13. It says. God said to Noah, at the end of all flesh, the end, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come to me, come before me. 
for the earth is filled with robbery through them. And behold, I am about to destroy, destroy them from the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood, right? Make the ark with compartments and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you should make it, 300 cubits the length of the ark, 50 cubits its width, and 30 cubits its height. The window shall you make for the ark and the and to a cubit finish it from from above. Put the entrance of the ark in its side and and make it with bottom, second and third decks. Right? Then so the most high was telling Noah how to construct this ark, right? The, you know, because he was in this, Noah was in like the Holy of Holies. So he was constructing this ark for the Most High. It's like the Ark of the Covenant, right? Like the ark that's in the, the that sits you know what I'm saying? In the, the bar, or it's like, you know? But that's what I'm trying to show. It's like, I'm not trying to show the physical, like, boat. I'm showing the mental mind state that Noah was in. See, because the most high, he destroying everything, he destroying all all things you know the world was filled with robbery you know so the most high he, he ended it all right so he 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 told noah build this ark you know and remember noah was righteous in the eyes of yahweh noah he was a friend to the Most High. He no walk with Yahweh. Check this out. Genesis 7, 5. He say, And Noah did according to everything Yahweh had commanded him. See, so Noah, you know what I'm saying? He followed Yah's instruction. You know what I'm saying? And, and when the world was against him, you know what I'm saying? He didn't care about what they said. But he continued to follow Yah's order, his instruction, right? His Torah, right? Because they say, Yah ain't gave us the Torah, but watch this. All right, watch this. He say, chapter 7, verse 11, say, In the 600th year of Noah's life, the set in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were open, and the rains were upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. See? So, the windows was opened up. Noah's mind opened up, right? And the most high rain, knowledge in his mind. Right? Uh, for 40 days and 40 nights. Just like when Moses was, he went into the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Right? But the most high, high he, he rained the fountains of the great deep burst forth. And the windows of heaven were open. Right? And the rain was upon the earth for what? 40 days and 40 nights. Like, it's the same process. Now, check out this. We're going to go to Genesis 11, verse 1. Right? The whole earth was of one language and of common purpose. And it came to pass when they migrated from the east, they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said one to another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them in fire. And the brick served them as stone, and the and the bitumen served them as mortar. And they said, "Come, let us build a city and a tower with its top 
in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves lest we lest we be dispersed across the whole earth uh, Shalak about that that was the wrong verse alright Shalak about that but it's uh, Genesis 12 verse 1 Say Hashem said to said to Abram, he said, "Go for yourself from your land, from your relatives, and from your father's house to a land that I show you, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and he who him who curse you, I will curse, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed." shall bless themselves by you. See there? So, the Most High, you know what I'm saying, he's steady dealing with Abraham. You know, he, he, he dealt with him 40 days, 40 nights. He said, Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying, he, Noah walked with Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh reigned for 40 days and 40 nights. Noah was righteous before Yahweh, right? Uh, uh, Noah built the ark up to Yahweh, see? So it wasn't just a one time dealing. That bright light came to uh, uh, Paul one time. But you see, Yahweh, he's standing dealing with Noah. And now he's dealing with Abraham, right? He tell Abraham, go to the land where I show you, and I will bless you. This this, this descendants of Noah right so it's spiritual but it's physical also when you're dealing with the bloodline because it's a physical people but the physical people need to be spiritual in this tour know what I mean all right let's uh go to Genesis chapter 14 right 14 18 watch this he say I'm going to start at 17. The king of Sodom went out to meet after his return from defeating Shalomor and the kings that were with him. See? So, Abraham, you know what I'm saying, just defeated these kings. Because the most high you have a wedding. Right? They say, after defeating the kings that were with him to the valley of Shiva, which is the king's valley. Right? But Melchizedek, king of Salaam, brought out bread and wine. He was a high priest of Yahweh, the Most High. See, so Melchizedek is a high priest of the Most High Yahweh. And he blessed him, saying, Blessed is Abraham of Yahweh, the Most High, maker of the heavens and the earth. And blessed be Yahweh, the Most High, who has delivered your foes into your hand. And he gave him a tenth of everything. See? So, the priest of the Most High, Melchizedek, is telling you, you know what I'm saying, that the Most High, Yahweh, he blessed Abraham. You know what I'm saying? The Most High is who delivered Abraham foes into his hand. You, you feel me? Like, so, by Abraham being with Yahweh, walking with Yahweh, Yahweh was a shield unto Abraham and was a force for Abraham. Right? And with that, we're going to go to Genesis 15, verse 1. Right? Say, after these events, the word of Yahweh came to Abraham in a what? A vision. Right? So, the words of Ab the words of Yahweh came to Abraham in a vision, saying, "Fear not, I fear not, Abraham. I am a shield for you. Your re your reward is very great. So the Most High is showing you." He said, "Fear not, Abraham. I am a shield for you." He came to Abraham in a vision, not a bright light, a vision. You see. Check this out. This uh, Genesis 15. We're going to read 12 and 13. Right? It says, It happened as the sun was about to set 
a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and behold, a dread, great darkness fell upon him. See, so this is a vision. 13, and he said to Abraham, know and certainly, know with certainly that your offspring will be aliens in a land not their own. See, so Abraham, your descendants is going to be in a mind state, you know what I'm saying, that is not of Yahweh. What he say? And they will serve them and they will oppress them 400 years. Right? But also know that nation will, that they will serve, I shall judge, and after, afterwards they will leave with great wealth. Right? And that's when we left out of Egypt. But you can see that they was in a physical land, but they also was in a spiritual mind state. That, that a mind state that was not of, of righteousness, not of Yahweh. Because if that was the case, we wouldn't have went into that captivity. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to go to uh, uh, Genesis 17, 1 through 5. Check it out. He said, when Abraham was 99 years old, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai, walk before me and be perfect. I will set my covenant between me and you. I will increase you most exceedingly. Abraham threw himself upon his face, and God spoke with him, saying, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be a father of a multitude of nations. Your name shall no longer be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of a multitude of nations. See? So, the Most High made Abraham a father of a multitude of nations. Verse 6, he said, and I, and, and he said, I will make you most exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings shall, de shall descend from you. See? He said, I will ratify my covenant between me and you and between your offspring after you throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant to be a God to you and to your offspring after you. See? So you see now in Exodus when he came back and said, I will be a God unto you. You know what I'm saying? And he, he, he ratified what he told Abraham. Right? But you can see the Most High dealt with him in a vision. It wasn't a bright light. You know what I'm saying? So Paul can sit down somewhere with these lies and these seats, right? But before we jump all of them, we're going to go back to uh, this. We're going to hit Genesis uh, 25 and 11. Because we, we showed uh, at Noah we showed Abraham how y'all dealt with Noah, you know, and it wasn't no, with no bright lights. You see how he dealt with Abraham, and it wasn't with no bright lights, but we had visions, right? Now let's talk about Isaac. I, uh, Genesis 25 and 11, we're going to start right here, you know. But it says, and, and it was after the death of Abraham that God blessed Isaac, his son. And Isaac sat up near Vera Leroy, Leroy. Vera La Haru. All right. Look, it say there was a famine in the land, aside from the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Ab Abimelech, king of the Philistines, and Jerusalem to Gerard, uh, Yahweh, see, Yahweh appeared to him and said, do not descend to Egypt, dwell in a land that I shall indicate to you, so join in this land and I will be with you and bless you, for to you and your offspring I will give all, all these lands and establish an oath that I swore to Abraham your father, see, so he's showing, he's telling them, you know, they, he gave, you know, 
him and his offspring these lands. And he gonna establish the oath that he swore with Abraham with Isaac. See there? He say, because Abraham obey, obeyed my voice and observed my safeguards, commandments, decrees, and what? My Torah. See, so before Moses, what happened? Abraham obeyed Yah's voice, served Yah's commandments, observed his safeguards, right? Yah's decrees, and, and what else? Yahweh's Torah. So Abraham followed after Yahweh's Torah, right? And this is before Moses. And yet we still haven't seen any bright lights. You see what I'm saying? So we can prove the Torah, but we can't prove, prove no bright lights. Cause you know what I'm saying? This didn't happen with the it didn't happen with the prophets. Yah didn't deal with the prophets concerning bright lights. Coming to him, talking Jesus, right? All right, so let's go to Genesis 26 real quick. All right, Genesis 26, 23. This is about Isaac, right? Isaac went up from Beersheba. Yahweh appeared to him that night and said, I am Yahweh of your father, Abraham. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bless you and increase your offspring because of Abraham, my servant. See? So Yahweh said he's doing this because of Abraham. Because Abraham was a servant to the Most High. Right? Because y'all said, I'm going to ratify with you and your descendants. My, he said, I'm going to ratify my covenant with your descendants after you. Right? All right, let's go to chapter 27. So, because we see that the Most High... He's dealing with Isaac. And these, this is visions. Right? It's no bright lights. You ain't heard of no bright lights yet when we talk about the prophets. So why did this bright light all of a sudden just come to Paul? But hold on. We ain't done with it. Hold on. Uh, uh, Genesis 27. Right? 26. 29 right and he say then his then his father Isaac said to him come close see this is when Isaac is blessing Jacob right because the most high set it up he, he told Rebecca you know what I'm saying he said I'm gonna set my uh my covenant with Isaac I mean uh Jacob right where we at Cause she said, "Why?" She she entreated the Most High, and he told you, "Said you got twins in your womb, right?" And he said he gonna establish his covenant with Jacob, right? But uh. We're going to uh, say, then his father Isaac said to him, come close, if you please, and kiss me, my son. So he drew close and kissed him. He smelled his fragrance. He smelled the fragrance of his garments and blessed him. He said, see, the fragrance of my son is like the fragrance of the field which Yahweh had blessed. See? Uh, it say, and, and Yahweh gave, he said, and may Yahweh give you of the dew of heavens and of the fatness of the earth and the abundant grain and wine. Peoples will serve you and regimes will prostrate themselves to you. Be a lord to your kinsmen and your to your kinsmen and your mother's son will prostrate themselves to you. Curse be they who curse you. Bless be they who bless you. See, this is Jacob's blessing from Isaac. Right? But when you go on, like, check it out. We're going to go 10 uh, uh, through 22. This is uh, 
Jacob's vision. Because the most I dealt with the prophets and, and Israel through like visions, divinations, right? This, uh, This uh, Genesis chapter 28, we're going to start at verse 10. He say, Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He encountered the place and spent the night there because the sun had set, right? Say, he took from the stones of the place which he arranged from his head and lay down from and lay down in that place. He And he drank, and behold, a ladder was set earthward and its top reached heavenward and behold angels of God were ascending and descending on it so angels of Yah was ascending and descending on this ladder, ladder right and behold Yahweh was standing over him and said I am Yahweh God of Abraham your father God of Isaac the ground oak the ground upon which you were with you are lying to you will to you I will give it to you, to your descendants. Your offspring shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread out powerfully westward, eastward, northward, and southward. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed, shall bless themselves by you and your offspring. Behold, I am with you. I will guard you wherever you go, and I will return you to this soil. For I will not forsake you until I have done what I have spoken about you. Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely Yahweh is present in this place. See, so it was a divination. Right? Because Yahweh dealt with him while he was sleeping. So he awoke and said, Surely Yahweh is present in this place. And I did not know. And I became frightened. And he became frightened and said, How awesome is this place? There is none other than the abode of than the abode of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone that he placed around his head and set it up as a pillar. And he poured oil on its top, and he named the place Bethel. However, love was the name of the original was the was the city's name originally. Then Jacob took a vow saying, if God will be with me, will will guard me on this way I'm going, I will give will give me bread to eat and clothes to wear, and I will return in peace to my father's house, and Yahweh will be a God to me, then this stone which I have set up as a pillar shall become a house of God and whatever and Whatever you will give me, I shall repeat repeatedly tent to you. I shall repeat it repeatedly tent to you. Right? So we see that Yah dealt with Jacob in a vision. Right? It wasn't a bright light. So from Noah to Jacob, the most high dealt in visions, divinations, no lights. No bright lights came to not one yet, right? Check it out. We're going to uh, kill the, go ahead, take it out uh, with uh, Genesis 35, right? Check it out. Genesis 35, 10 through 13 uh, says, and, and God said to him, your name is Jacob. You shall not always be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. Thus he called his name Israel. And Yah said to him, I am El Shaddai, be fruitful and, and multiply. A nation and a congregation of nations shall descend from you, and kings shall issue from your loins. The land that I gave Abraham and to Isaac I will give to you and to your offspring after you I will give, this, give the land. Then God ascended from upon him in the place where he had spoken to him. See? So the Most High is dealing with you in your debar. And then, well, he, he ascended from that place. Right? So he spoke with him in his debar. 
And then he moved around. The Most High ascended from where he spoke to him. Right? But you see, the Most High changed his name. Because Jacob wrestled with God, right? Jacob wrestled with God. So, like, when they start talking about Jacob wrestling with the Most High, he's not talking like a physical WWE type wrestling. You know, it's, it's this wrestling within the spirit. You know, a good and bad consciousness. You know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 right and wrong knowledge. You know what I'm saying? It's light and dark. Life and death. You know what I'm saying? So, Jacob, he was in a spiritual battle. Right? But we showing that the most I dealt by divination. You know what I'm saying? The more I dealt with with the people through 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 uh uh divinations, uh not bright lights. Like we gonna go uh show you that Paul was a demon, Paul was a liar. We're gonna go to uh uh what's it uh Romans. Right, Romans chapter 3 verse 7 Paul said if the truth of God had more abounded through my life unto his glory why yet am I also just a sinner cause you's a sinner you's a liar couldn't judge you as a sinner if you wasn't lying you went against the laws of Moses so you going against Yahweh's Torah so you a wicked demon, Paul. And you and your followers. And why people think that Paul may look like this, I still say he look more like this. You know what I'm saying? Because he was the uh, son of a Pharisee and the, and the son of an Israelite woman. So he would look more like that. But this is the image they give us, right? Because he a liar, so his seed is a liar. Right? They serpents. His people. Right? Because this is what he is. He eat them. He come from Esau. He's Edom, an Edomite. Because his father is a Pharisee. Now it makes sense why he couldn't go in the temple, cause he was a he was a uh, a pagan, so he wasn't allowed. So they had started the church of Antioch, but Yahweh dealt with the church in Jerusalem, and, and so when Paul wrote these letters to the church of Antioch, Paul was not teaching Torah; he was teaching something else, right? Because y'all didn't deal with these bright lights. Right? He didn't, y'all didn't deal, y'all didn't, he didn't give you no bright light. That's what Paul was talking about, this bright light. But that's off. Right? And when you're talking about Romans, these are Romans. These the Romans right here. These the Saturians that saved Paul when, when the Israelites was stoning him. Right? When you read Acts, what is it, 27 through 30, 33, or 27 through 30, yeah. They was trying to stone him. And these the, these the Roman Saturians, right, that saved him. This is Greek. This is the Greek man. So what's the difference between this Greek man and that Roman satyria? Don't they look out like the same people? Maybe the same blood? Ain't no difference. They both is Edom. 
Just a different name. But they eat them. The sons of Esau. These Edomites. Roman, Greek, how you want to look at it. Right? So with that, I like to uh, say uh, Shalom, Shalom to the knights. No, foundate yourself in the Most High Yahweh and in His Torah. You know, no time for wickedness, no time for folly. You know, if we see serpents running around us, cut the heads off of them. Then separate yourself from the wicked. You know what I'm saying? And with that, I like to say uh, peace, Yahweh Akah, Shalom.